all right hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is brian from k hux nation and for today's dragalia lost episode we are going over all of the new units or at least the the new pullable units uh that really recently, recently came out for the summer event uh that we also have currently going on okay now in case you watched my previous video dragalia lost video covering uh, all of the recent updates and new event and such I kind of already have a somewhat idea as to what I'm gonna say in here I, I kind of gave a little bit of a snippet uh, But I'm gonna go kind of go into full detail this time in this video uh, Over all three new units two actual adventure units and one new dragon unit uh, But yeah without further ado, let's get started. So the first one is Julieta This is a five-star water axe user uh <laughs> love the image by the way anyways her activated abilities are first one being sunny flash deals water damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts bog i always like it whenever an attack is both single target and has an aoe effect to it at the same time those are typically really good in my opinion um it's just a lot easier to work with. uh the 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 fact that it also inflicts a status infliction ailment, whatever it's called in this game, uh, is also just a nice plus. Okay. Uh, her second activated ability, Vacation Vigor, uh, increases the user and nearby ally's strength by 15% for 15 seconds. Already a decent thing. And activates skill shift. Phase 2 adds an additional 10% increase to the user and nearby ally's critical rate, not damage, critical rate okay or not critical yeah critical rate for 15 seconds while phase three also grants the user and nearby allies a one use shield that nullifies damage less than 30 percent of the user's max hp this doesn't stack with other shields now vacation vigor isn't really isn't that bad to be honest um the increasing uh your team strength by 15 percent for fi uh, 15 seconds already at base is already decent it's nothing fantastic though um because many other characters already kind of do stuff like that anyway so it's honestly not it, it there's nothing too special about the base part of it okay the main thing that would be useful for vacation figure is the critical hit rate uh increase okay that's the big thing because that if i understand that correctly that basically means that you can trigger critical hits more often so it's basically it's almost like thinking of uh if a character has like a 10 percent trans chance to get a critical hit okay vacation vigor at phase two okay the second time you use it um will increase the critical hit rate by 10 percent so it'll jump it up from 10 percent chance to do a critical hit to a 20 percent chance to do a critical hit okay that's what's so big about it uh, that's why it's so useful and if and of course if you depending on what character you're using or what worm prints you're using or whatnot um if you stack that with even more additional uh critical hit increase rate increases as well to make it even further uh you could potentially have a very devastating <laughs> critical hit team on your hand to just do outrageous amounts of damage okay so that would be the main thing to track of for vacation figure okay all together though it her abilities are not really that fantastic in my opinion they're not the most wow in my opinion uh a lot of the stuff that she can do a lot of other characters can already do too so it's there's nothing too particularly special that would make me want to get her specific so far uh her co-ability provides a 15 percent uh team defense buff okay not too bad kind of standard though uh abilities passive abilities the first one being bog uh 10 percent buffs entire team strength by 10 percent for 10 seconds after successfully inflicting an enemy with bog after activating this ability will not activate again for five seconds again already pretty decent it combos uh perfectly well synergizes perfectly well with her first activate ability which already inflicts bog okay hello so on top of the fact that it's 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 kind of nice uh because not only do you increase your team strength is it team strength yeah you increase your team strength just by using your first ability and then if you uh by 10 percent 
And then if you follow it up with your second ability, you can also increase your team strength by an additional 15%. Um, so altogether, you can boost your team strength by 25% if you use them back to back, which honestly isn't that bad when you think about it like that, okay? Uh, don't know if that's... I still don't know if that it's that's enough for me to warrant wanting to chase after this type of character. Uh, but when you think about it more along those lines, it's it's definitely a lot better. Um, maybe if you have if you have a critical hit team, uh, this will definitely be absolutely massive because not only is your entire team getting a 25% uh, strength buff on top of increasing the entire team's critical hit rate, which is nuts. <laughs> All right, because uh, now the critical hits will actually do stupid amounts of damage too, because they're also getting their damage amplified by 25%. Um, then in that case, yeah, I can see that being absolutely disgusting. Uh, but in generic average uses, I don't really see this character being that great. Okay. Uh, the prime strength plus 10%, okay. Uh, most characters these days have resistance 100% resistance or at least the five star units have 100% resistance to something so that's not a big deal uh has a prime strength though uh in case you aren't aware we started seeing prime strength with the recent new fire units that came along with the chapter 9 release uh came with like ramona and i think what is the name ella uh, ella i don't remember it, it starts with an e l uh, increases the strength of the venture you are currently controlling by 10% for 10 seconds every time their initial skill displayed at the top of this skill list becomes available for use. After activating this ability, will not activate again for 15 seconds. Basically, you know how you can press like the, the bottom left button to swap characters mid-battle, okay? Uh, whatever character you're currently controlling will, rece will still receive uh, a 10% strength buff every time you use their first activate ability a bull ability okay the first activated ability uh which is still pretty nice so one thing that you could if if you choose to do so one strat you could potentially do um if you don't want to leave it to the ai is start off as what's her name again julietta you can start off as julietta uh spam your first two abilities get uh just do a burst amount of damage get the team 25 percent uh strength buff then you can swap over to a crit uh, a more critical hit oriented character on your team your that per, uh, particular teammate will receive the 10 percent uh passive buff from julietta so that character alone will already start receiving i think if i understand it correctly a 35 percent strength buff okay uh when they use their first activated ability which can be absolutely nuts uh that's if i'm understanding that they all stack <laughs> correctly okay um but yeah overall Ju julietta is only only seems to be really good if you have the team to appropriately back her up with okay otherwise on her own in a generic setup she's n she's not the greatest okay she's not too different from any other random uh unit so the next unit we have celeria she in my opinion is probably one of the most ridiculous and she can definitely help out like almost any team or most teams universally way more often she's really good um it's a very specific reason so she's a five star water sword user okay uh first ability ocean fury deals water damage to enemies directly ahead and flicks bog second ability pep talk it's the pep talk that really seals the deal here though uh, deals water damage to surrounding enemies and increases the entire team's defense by 10% for 10 seconds and activates skill shift. Phase 2 adds an additional 10% increase to the entire team's strength for 10 seconds, while Phase 3 adds an additional 20% increase to the, entire, to the team's attack rate for 10 seconds. It's the attack rate that seals the deal for me. Okay, uh, so let's go step by step. Alright, so first of all, at base, Increases the entire team's defense by 10% for 10 seconds. But that alone, as I've kind of stated in multiple and in a few of my other videos already, any unit that can increase your team's defense is already pretty pretty good in my book. Just because of the fact that A, it makes your team more tanky, and B, uh, you can definitely follow it up by having any double buffs 
uh, particularly healing double buffs on your team to just help keep your team uh have your team help your team have more self-sustain in case your healer might not be enough or something or if it's a particularly difficult event and you just need to stay alive as long as possible uh any unit that can provide defense at base is already pretty decent in my book okay um the second phase increase the entire team strength for 10 seconds that's okay that's decent but the fact that you can increase uh the entire team's attack rate the speed at which they attack okay by 20 percent to me that is absolutely nuts okay uh if i i if i i believe if i recall correctly uh from what i know so far not very many other units in the game have an ability that increase the attack rate for the entire team okay uh I, if i i think there's only like a handful of units that actually do something like that okay um and you want as many of those as possible because here's the reason why increasing attack rate for your team is so i want to say almost it's op it's not quite op but it's leaning on the edge of op and it's primarily because of the fact that uh, it basically combos into everything else you would want to do. Uh, into increasing the attack rate of your of your units, of your adventurers, means that A, it means you're outputting more damage within the same amount of time. And more damage means you're increasing, uh, you're refilling your activated abilities cooldowns quicker. Okay? Refilling them quicker means you can output more damage. And it's just a, it's just a spiral effect. Okay? Or, uh, yeah. It, it just combos into one another. Um, this is also particularly most useful uh, for characters on your team. Oh no, my screen froze. Okay. <laughs> for uh, characters on your team that rely on their abilities a little bit more often. If you combine this with uh, any haste abilities, whether through like your worm prints and such, if you combine this with haste abilities on your adventurers to. Uh, which already help them uh, receive their uh, their activated abilities cooldowns quicker on their own. Combine that with the attack rate increase, and you'll be having characters such as uh, Gala Cleo, which we just received recently. You'll be able to spam their abilities like mad, like a madman. <laughs> you'll literally just be able to spam them because not only do you have the haste from your worm prints and such to increase getting your abilities faster but you can also spam damage faster too which already boosts it up even more okay so that's absolutely nuts and for just and that's just a simple example okay of course if you do you can also combine it with a critical hit uh team as well where uh normally one strategy is to just increase the critical hit rate of your team so that way it procs more often but if you also combine that with increasing the attack rate, that means you have more chances to try and proc the critical hits more often as well. Uh, and of course, if you're just going for a pure raw strength build too, nothing fancy, just pure raw strength, okay? Just increasing the strength of your team overall, just stacking it as much as possible. Maybe throwing some afflictions and maybe you have characters that do more damage when they're afflicted. Uh, then that just means you get to put in more hits more often meaning more damage overall okay so no matter what how you look at it increasing the attack rate in the game is probably from what i can tell one of the most broken things you can possibly do as of right now okay there's a few other things in the game that are kind of, uh from what i can tell so far that are also equally just as good uh such as like bleed for example bleed doesn't count as a status affliction all right meaning that you can pretty much use it on almost any enemy uh which you can't say for actual afflictions okay uh they recently just made a change to afflictions so that pretty much most afflictions can stack now uh multiple times like bleed however a lot of enemy bosses are tend to be resistant uh to many types of uh afflictions now so that's why bleed is so good because bleed doesn't count as affliction so bleed will almost always work on any type of boss um or any for that matter okay so that's just like another example okay <laughs> attack increasing attack rate 
uh, is, is like right along those lines where it's just so good because almost any team can use it regardless of the build you're using. Uh, and it, yeah, it's just absolutely nuts. So for that reason alone, Celeria, in my opinion, is definitely one of those adventures that like is probably potentially worth chasing for just because of how broken that mechanic can be on a team regardless of what units you're using. Even if you're using like basic five star uh, beginner adventure adventurers that you just received, like you just started the game or something, um, she will still help make those units like a little bit more nuts. So, and that's just her activated rules. Anyways, let's go on to her passives. Uh, strength double buff, 13%. Fairly standard. Increases strength by 13% for 15 seconds each time a defense up buff is received. Cough, cough. Err. Pep talk at base already provides a defense boost. So, <laughs> that alone already triggers the double buff, the strength double buff. Okay. Uh, for Solaria herself. Again, just makes it really good. Um. 100% burn resistability, kind of standard. Uh, it has a plus 30% buff time, which is really good for Solaria herself. It doesn't affect the whole team, but for Solaria herself, because remember, she, her pep talk gives you boost. It gives you defense boost. It gives you strength boost. It gives you uh, an attack speed boost. Okay, so all of those get increased by 30% from her own passive, which is kind of nuts. <laughs> After we already just explained how nuts her critical attack rate increase was, right? So uh, in combination with her third passive, uh, increasing the team's defense by 10% for 10 seconds, instead of 10 seconds, 10 seconds, it actually is 13 seconds, okay? I know it doesn't sound a lot, but in the middle of a battle, every second is a, is like, is a long time. Um, or uh, increasing strength for 10 seconds, that's also 13 seconds, okay? Or increasing the attack rate for 10 seconds, that's also for 13 seconds. So basically all of her uh, buffs from her pep talk increase from 10 seconds to 13 seconds, okay? Which is already pretty damn good in my opinion, okay? Then we go into the five-star dragon that we received for this, uh, this banner, five-star water dragon called Siren. Uh, her activated ability is called Aquatic Melody. Deals water damage to surrounding enemies. Increases the damage dealt by the user's next skill by 40%. Pretty good, okay? Especially in... Yeah, it's just pretty good overall, no matter who you're playing, okay? Uh, quick burst damage. And then when you go back into your adventure form, uh, whenever you use your first activate... Yeah, whenever you use an activated ability, it just does an extra burst of damage, okay? You could probably definitely abuse this for particular characters uh that might have maybe like like if you do like a critical hit build for example um and the entire team's like critical hit rate on top of uh, uh yeah critical hit rate has been increased okay if you can transform uh activate aquatic melody get the 40 percent damage uh boost as well on top of any maybe strength buffs that you might have as well okay uh, if you manage to land a critical hit, you could probably do a s absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. <laughs> and probably more than I could ever see. Like, you, there, there, I'm, there's very likely ways that you could probably abuse this mechanic, okay? Uh, the passive abilities, if it's users attuned to water, 20% increase the strength. It's honestly kind of suboptimal. It's kind of low, to be honest. Uh, the main thing, though, that's going to really help out is the uh the skill damage plus 90 percent now if you weren't aware they recently made an update where they uh adjusted a couple other dragons uh stats to match the same as sirens passive abilities where they also have increased their skill damage to 90 percent as well don't remember what they were off the top of my head but it was like two dragons that they did that to uh i think one was a uh shadow dragon and i don't remember what the what i don't remember what element the other dragon was too uh, but the fact that it increases skill damage to 90%, that's absolutely huge. That's a massive amount of skill damage. That's almost double. On top of the fact that the user is also being increased their strength at base passively by 20%. That's pretty huge, to be honest. So, yeah. Okay, so next up, in terms of the four-star unit, we got Summer Ranzel. Okay, I haven't seen this one. 
Uh, I just received it recently in a poll, but I haven't actually like took a taken a look at his uh, abilities just yet. But so we'll just take a look at it real quick. For sure, Summer Ranzo, four star. I think I don't know what's that called. Not uh, katana. I think I don't know. Four star katana unit, water. First ability surfs up, deals water damage to enemies directly ahead, and inflicts fog, changing the direction as possible during the attack. Kind of standard. It's not that bad. The fact that it inflicts bog at least is already decent uh, for four star unit. Second ability, barbecue bond bonanza, increases the user and nearby ally strength by 10% for 15 seconds and gradually recovers the HP for 15 seconds. This is actually not that bad. Uh, any healing ability that heals and provides buffs of some sort is always really good in my book uh i'm actually gonna have a video come out fairly soon talking about uh going over what i believe are the best healers in the game and the the best healer in my opinion is actually a four star unit uh that should be a lot easier to obtain compared to the five star unit uh which is also water unit actually too and yeah and she also has an ability like that where she heals a lot on top of having all this like extra support ish type of ability so yeah barbecue bonanza is actually not that bad not too bad on top of being a damage unit too that has a healing unit that's that's you don't see that type of thing often uh so definitely an actually pretty decent four star unit already uh, on its own Go ability, increases strength by 10%, kind of standard. Uh, passive ability, loss of offense, 40%. Buff strength by 40% for 15 seconds when HP drops to 30%. I normally don't like abilities like this. It's always nice. Uh, this is kind of similar to like units like Veronica, for example, where they have abilities like this. A lot of people, or at least quite a few people, seem to assume that you want to get them to that percentage that hp percentage like in this case 30 percent of their hp or i disagree i always view abilities more like of this more like a last resort type of thing um if you ever played super smash bros if you ever played lucario it's kind of the same way how like yeah sure they might do more damage when they're closer to dying but ideally that doesn't mean you want to be in that percentage either because then you start becoming more of a glass cannon typically the best approach to go about it is to uh stay alive as long as possible okay so that means take as little hits as possible and that way when you do get damage you're steadily getting stronger uh and you'll you'll slowly inflict more damage over time so basically overall all together you deal more you do more damage output in the long run compared to if you just try and get to the low hp at the very beginning so for that Big burst damage where you risk potentially dying at any given moment okay that's kind of how i view it um so abilities like this like lost defense only really work for very specific types of characters who can actually abuse the type of mechanic more often. uh otherwise it's not really that big of a deal uh stun resistant 100 again kind of standard uh primed defense this is very similar to the prime strength that got introduced as well. Uh, increases the defense of the venture you are currently controlling by 8% for 10 seconds every time their initial skill, their first activated ability becomes used. Can't be activated again for 15 seconds. Okay, so fairly standard. Uh, again, this is also pretty decent as well because it can help trigger any double buff uh, abilities that you might have in your adventures. So altogether, a fairly decent four star unit to be honest pretty pretty decent to be like it i might possibly actually use him uh if i in in my water setup since i don't have a lot of uh i don't have a lot of good water units so not that bad but other than that that's pretty much it for today guys just a quick review pretty much the main unit you want is Sol is solaria the others are decent okay but there's nothing too outstanding about them Solaria is absolutely nuts though. Uh, go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below about the new units though. Any thoughts and suggestions you might want to give out for any other new players coming into the game. Um, I know it's kind of somewhat new for the channel, but other than that, 
If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHX Nation. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.